I'm Lisa Doran. I'm the Deputy Director for Curatorial Affairs here at WICMA. And thank you all for coming out on this gloomy and cold and rainy uh, Williamstown night for what is the second program in a series that we're calling Envisioning Curatorial Practice. Our first program was last spring with Darcy Alexander, who is the former curator at the Walker Art Center and now director of the Katona Art Museum. The series will happen biannually starting in uh, the fall, and it's co-presented with the Williams Graduate Program in Art History. And I want to thank Mark Gottlieb, who um, unfortunately couldn't be here tonight, but he's the director of the graduate program. And he's, his support has really allowed us to think kind of more expansively about, uh, about the series and what we can do with it. I also want to acknowledge um, in absentia my colleague Sonic Coggins, uh, who is uh, the Associate Director of Academic and Public Engagement here at the museum. She's on maternity leave right now, uh, but she's really the brains behind the operation in terms of um, thinking through um, what we can do with the series. Um, not only how we can bring uh, practitioners who are pushing uh, really uh, in interesting ways, curatorial practice, um, moving things in new directions, here to campus to speak, but also how we can put uh, those people together in intimate settings with Williams uh, students to share their experience. So um, speaking of big thinking and pushing curatorial boundaries, um, it's my pleasure to introduce tonight's speaker, Cesar Garcia. I first met Cesar in 2013 when we were on a curatorial research trip in Israel together. And I recall just being blown away uh, by his ambition and his accomplishment. At that time, the mistake room was well underway in the planning. Um, Cesar had built an impressive board of directors, uh, but I think had not yet settled on the location, the precise location for the space, and he, but he was hard at work putting all the pieces and parts together. Um, the mistake room, did, then did open a year later in an incredible site uh, in downtown Los Angeles uh, to great fanfare uh, with an exhibition of Oscar Murillo's work. Cesar's vision in selecting the site uh, for the mistake room in the southern part of downtown LA was truly prescient and a number of major commercial galleries are now following him there. Uh, Caesar's talk this evening will elaborate on the work that Mistake Room is doing, but suffice it to say that it's filling a gap in the arts landscape in Los Angeles, and it is getting the attention of the arts establishment and causing some waves. Um, you can probably tell just from the name itself that what happens there is not just business as usual. In addition to his work as the founding director and chief curator of the Mistake Room, Caesar is a scholar, a writer, and an educator. He formerly served as the associate director and senior curator at LAX Art, which is an independent contemporary art space in Los Angeles. He was part of the curatorial teams of the California Biennial and the, or, at the Orange County Museum in 2008, and also the first Los Angeles Biennial organized jointly with the Hammer Museum and LAX Art in 2012. Also in 2012, he served as the US Commissioner for the 13th International Cairo Biennial and as curatorial advisor on the 55th Venice Biennale in 2013. His list of curatorial projects is too long to recount here, but he is responsible for bringing a number of uh, major international artists to Los Angeles and sometimes to the United States for the first time. He's currently working on an international survey of abstract painting and major historical exhibition devoted to third cinema, as well as monographs with artists Ed Clark, Teresa Berga, and Vivian Suter, and others. The title of Cesar's talk tonight is Beyond Institutionalism, Notes on Curatorial Practices and Spatialities. Drawing on his ongoing doctoral research, it will look at experimental models of artistic and cultural production in Latin America, Africa, the Middle East, and Asia over the last decade, and how they might allow us in the, U in the US to reconsider the role and function of independent non-collecting arts institutions. Please join me in warm welcome for Cesar Garcia. Thank you everyone so much for being here. Um, and I'd like to begin by thanking Lisa Doran for the invitation to come speak here this evening and to everyone at the museum for their warm hospitality. Like Lisa mentioned, I met Lisa and I met on a research trip to Israel a few years ago, two years ago. And at the time I was in the midst of two things, of completing extensive field research for a doctoral project that was looking at experimental spaces in the global south 
And I'll explain how I'll define that term a little later on tonight. And also opening a new art institution in Los Angeles. But at the time, the mistake room was sort of in that interstitial space between thought and form, really sort of garnering on a lot of the research and the models that I was sort of coming to understand through my research and figuring out how that was going to be incorporated into this new institution that I was going to, to establish in Los Angeles. So now the Mistake Room is, um, has been operating for a year. We've just celebrated our first um, year anniversary. And it seemed to me as I was thinking about our conversation this evening that perhaps tracing these two parallel projects, my academic work on these non-traditional spaces and the founding of the Mistake Room might be the most accurate and thoughtful way to illustrate a process of applied scholarship that really highlights the inevitable and critical interdependencies between academic and curatorial practices. Both projects um, really begin in 2007 when I was part of the curatorial team of, of the 2008 California Biennial at the Orange County Museum of Art. For those of you who aren't familiar with this biennial, it actually no longer exists. It's been replaced with a different version um, that now is a little broader and looks at the at the Pacific Rim. But the project at the time was really an incubator for artistic practices that focused on supporting emerging and mid-career artists working throughout the state of California. Like other biennials, the exhibition faced many of the challenges that large-scale shows encounter. There was always a lot of conversations around how to define categories of emerging and mid-career artists how to represent a, a very focused geographic locality that nevertheless was always in conversation with a much broader global structure, and how to sort of capture, categorize trends in artistic approaches at a time when artists were realizing their investigations in multiple mediums, and even in works that like curator Lucy Lepart famously argues are post-medium. So actions, events, or unrealized proposals. Now, with these considerations in mind, and amongst many others, we're in responding to the, actually, California as a locale, both real and imaginary, the biennial team knew that it was going to be incredibly easy to fall into the prototypical romanticisms of California art that other exhibition projects had constructed by attempting to put forth totalizing and all-encompassing frameworks. Despite the powerful and almost ingrained visual imagery of Hollywood swimming pools, palm trees, and convertible cars, we thought that perhaps we could show that California could be different. So rather than establishing a single curatorial premise, it was our intention to stimulate an intergenerational dialogue similar to the one that our research had shown to be very prominent in the development of art schools in Southern California in particular, while at the same time highlighting contradictions throughout the, throughout the state by looking at different ecologies of cultural production that existed in the region. To do this, the exhibition was spatially decentralized and spread throughout 20 different venues from San Francisco all the way down to the United States-Mexico border in Tijuana near San Diego. I oversaw a selection of these off-site projects and exhibitions that were realized often through collaborations with other museums or city entities or university galleries or artist-run spaces. And one of the projects that was particularly influential was an exhibition that was staged in Estación Tijuana, which is a contemporary art space um, founded along the most traffic border crossing in the world in 2005 by artist Marcos Ramirez R. Now the space operated for almost five years and it was both the artist's studio and an experimental hub to support artists working in this very charged region. This was a time at the height of the cartel wars. So it was a time when a lot of the different cities along the US-Mexico border had lost control of certain municipalities. And you saw an increase in violence because of a sort of a crackdown from the government on a lot of the drug trafficking cartels. I was living in the region at the time conducting research on looking at these spaces that had also sort of expanded to become um, public platforms for people at a time when certain government entities were falling apart. Erre would organize public lectures and programs at the space, workshops. Um, he would invite curators to come and do lectures with young artists and open up, and open up the space for guest curated projects, all in hope of providing some type of infrastructural support 
for the presentation of creative practices that had no other space, um, institutional or commercial, for their cultivation and growth. Now, while I had spent significant time in Tijuana, Mexicali, and Juarez, my participation in the project and my introduction to Erre began to unveil an interwoven set of dynamics that informed not just this locale, but various highly contested historiographic dimensions of Latin American art, and more broadly, artistic practices in the global south. During an early meeting with Erre to discuss the biennial, project that we staged at Estación, I asked him about the space, how he funded it, how the program was structured, how he managed to sustain it. And at the time, my interest in these types of spaces 